Hey, 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 everybody. Angling Army is back. I am in uh, coming to you live from La Pine, Oregon. I thought now would be a good time to do a Sunray 109 video. Had a bunch of people wanting to see it. So here it is. Sunray Sport, Sunray 109 in orange. I'll just start at the tongue. Uh, it came with one battery and a 20 pound tank. I added a battery, put a 40 pound tank. Um, that thing reading jacket there, that was a bicycle rack. The spare was originally mounted there. I didn't like it. So I did a little fabricating and got my spare and my shovel up there. 40 pound tank strapped on with uh, 10 gallons of extra fuel. Uh, this thing also came with that ARB awning. It's uh, 10 or 12 feet. That thing stretches way out. Uh, this little Sunray 109, it's a 2019 uh, model. Um, you can purchase this thing for around 10 grand, depending on where you go. Some places are a little more, some places are a little less. I bought mine uh, at a place called Scenic Roads RV in Tennessee. Um, great couple that owns that, nice as they could be. Um, I could have, the cheapest place I found it was 83 RV in Illinois, and it was 83, 83 plus tax. So, um, if you want to go to Illinois, you can get it for about nine grand. Um, it's the off-road package, which means it's got a lift on it, and the off-road tires, and uh, half the people I run into, they kind of laugh with off-road tires on a trailer, but I'll tell you, there are some advantages to those. Um, having that thicker off-road tread makes it less likely to puncture. On top of that, um, when you're on these trails and they're muddy, uh, that trailer wants to slide and those get a little more bite, so they help. It has uh, outdoor speakers. We have a uh, 110 plug there when you got your generator going, so you got some outlets. Obviously, there's an air conditioner there. That propane also runs the heat. It's got a furnace and a thermostat on the wall. And let me tell you, I was in Brothers, Oregon, camping in the desert for three days. And it was uh, one night it got down to 13 degrees and I literally got too hot. I was sweating in that thing. Um, so that that is one awesome deal. I have been traveling now. This is like my 21st day, I think. Uh, on the road basically living out of this situation and it has just been awesome I have done some pretty serious off-roading. I have been 30 40 miles Back off rough forest roads. This thing has followed me everywhere. I needed to go um, and uh, For the really rough stuff you can always make camp unhook it and go wheel with the best of them. I Will uh, let's see. Let's go down this side while we're here. So there's the back to the furnace. You've got a uh, freshwater city connection there. And you've got a freshwater tank. I think it's 26 gallons. It's a 20 gallon tank, but you've also got a hot water heater, a six gallon hot water heater. So in total, you've got 26 gallons of fresh water. Uh, that, that's an outside shower here. I'm not gonna open it up, but it's just your typical two knob uh, pull out shower. Um, that's a storage compartment. Let's see if it's unlocked. Yes, it is. And I just keep a bunch of crap in there. That is, uh, that's the vent to the furnace. Um, also got a couple of roof racks up there, which I'm not using, but I hadn't needed to, luckily. I changed the jack. It has one of those, had one of those cheesy tongue jacks here. I remove that and put that one on flip down. Uh, it's a two inch receiver there for a two inch ball. 
Uh, we have a kitchen off the back. So this just raises up. You can walk right under. So we've got a, a microwave, refrigerator, cabinets. I've got a table shoved in there right now. My grill latched down in there. Your sink with hot water. Um, it's lit. Uh, and cabinets full of all the stuff that you shouldn't be eating but makes really good trail food um, the microwave makes an awesome little bread box open up the fridge for you and you have a little freezer section which is cool I'm not going to take that table out and show you all my pots and pans and all that jazz but that's what it is I put that paper towel holder in there that didn't come that way so that's pretty much the tail now on the inside I used to have a door that locks and like I said I've been living in this thing for 21 days y'all so don't be don't be judging me but that's my bed I bought one of those little cabinets from Walmart and just screwed it to the wall um, the bed is six feet five inches of sleeping room from head to toe I've also got a generator strapped down in here so I've got shore power so I can do whatever I need to and that's set up to run off of propane so a few little odds and ends we've got the Furion going on outdoor speakers uh, smoke detector got your little fart fan going on there it's also wired for uh, TV and it's also wired for solar uh, this bed will will push up and the, uh, the the cushions will fold up and make a couch or it will pull on out about another foot so you have plenty of room for two people to sleep in there uh, and there's my little thermostat so yeah as far as camping and living on the road this thing has been awesome and you have no problem getting off-road with it pulling it i've had this thing the rear wheels bouncing a foot off the ground i kid you not just from some of the rough stuff i've encountered and whatnot but man it's been it's been true as the mail um i had a, i had a few problems though the uh the motherboard on the furnace uh, wouldn't work and went out. Uh, it was kind of intermittently working. And I went about three nights with no heat and about three trips getting that figured out, what was going on. But finally got that working. And uh, I'm not real impressed with the fresh water system on it. It's getting contaminated with dust. Um, you know, I don't know if it's just from it's not leaking but i think the the drain hose they all have that overfill hose i think dust is getting getting in and contaminating my water and on top of that it's hard to keep water in it i think it's literally bouncing it out from from the rough trails and rough riding because i'll fill that thing up and uh, I drive interstate and the sun gun stays full and I get off road, do 20, 30 miles off road and get to camp and man, I'm lucky to have a few gallons of water in that thing. And it's not leaking anywhere. I have, I have gotten down to the tank, looked at everything. So I'm tempted to just cap off that overflow tube. And if anybody thinks that's a bad idea, let me know in the comments or let me know what I should do. I don't know, maybe get a filter and plug the end of it, or I don't know what in the hell to do. Y'all tell me what to do. So, I don't know what else to say about my little Sunray 109 off-road. Um, you can get them in a variety of colors. Um, but it's, it's, it's kept me warm, it's kept me dry. It's kept me in water. It's kept me sleeping like a baby. Um, I have met a lot of really awesome people in Oregon and made a handful of, of friends that I'll have for life. And most of them are 
uh, like like uh, Brandon there and that Ursa Minor, Minor are rooftop tenting it and things. And I can tell you right now, I am sleeping a way more comfortable. My quality of life is smoking theirs, whether they want to admit it or not. So, yeah. Uh, the, the only real disadvantage to this thing versus a rooftop is you, you're extra long it's, and it's hard to turn around on trails and you're not going to do extreme wheeling, but it will definitely uh, follow you just anywhere. Anywhere I've gone, it's followed me around. And like I said, it's no trouble. It takes two seconds to unhook that thing and then go wheel with the best of them. Which brings me to this and I'll throw this in. See how my front wheels are nice and straight? Look at my steering wheel. I unhooked from my trailer. It was like letting a dog off the leash and went wheeling. Of course, the first nasty little embankment I came to it had been raining it was wet and muddy and about halfway up was was a stump and I wound up uh, it was one of those deals where uh, you had to have momentum and uh, the throttle hammered to make it and I made it but halfway up I my front wheel I kind of slid and bounced off a stump and it bent my track bar but I didn't know it bent my track bar. I, I, I get up there, I come down, and all of a sudden my steering wheel is like 45 degrees off. It's driving fine, it's not pulling. But uh, yeah, I had a little trail drama. So I went by the Jeep dealership in Bend and met a super nice guy there. Has actually lived in Tennessee before. His name was Bobby and uh, great Jeep mechanic. He put it up on the lift there and he, he found it didn't take him five minutes to find out what was wrong so he's working on getting me a track bar <clears throat> so that might delay me a day, few days it's i don't even know what today is sunday i guess saturday sunday hell i don't know anymore so i'm hoping to maybe get that thing going by tuesday and he said worst comes to worst it will be 10 days so, but the Jeep's still drivable. It's not hurting anything. Uh, it's probably not real good on my tires having that front end off a little bit, but it's not like I'm doing thousands of miles. So anyway, I'll keep y'all updated on the track bar situation. And there's my little Sunray 109, 1100 pounds dry. <clears throat> Pulls like a champ. I uh, really don't have a bad thing to say about it. I ain't an army. Over and out.